بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I would like to present my lecture today which about the motor cerebellar sense and sensory system disorders first of all motor system the objectives of this lecture is to describe the functional anatomy of the motor system to list the clinical manifestation of its lesions to get an approach to diagnosis to list the pattern of weakness and lastly the clinical localization of the lesion. Several parts of the central nervous system are involved in the regulation of motor activity. These include the pyramidal system, basal ganglia, cerebellum and the lower motor neurons of the brain stem and spinal cord. The primary motor cortex is located in the precentral gyrus. The motor cortex receives input from the premotor cortex, supplementary motor area, frontal association cortex, and the primary somatosensory area cortex. The supplementary motor area gives rise to complex movement in perception for assumption of a characteristic posture. So, it drives to facilitate the formulation or programming of a strategy of complex of voluntary movements and provide background for the fine motor control. The nerve signals generated in the prefrontal premotor area cause much more complex gross patterns of movement. The premotor cortex is influenced by superior colliculus, basal ganglia, and cerebellum via projections from the thalamus. The pyramidal system consists of fibers of pyramidal tracts which divide it into two groups, corticospinal and corticobulbar, that descend from the cerebral cortex. The corticobulbar tracts, synapse, in the, on the motor nuclei of the cranial nerve. and in the opposite side of the brainstem, while the corticospinal tracts mostly decussate in the cervical medullary junction, as you see in this figure, this is part of decussation, and descend in the lateral corticospinal tract on the side opposite that of their origin, where they synapse on the lower motor neurons in the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord. Approach to diagnosis. First of all, define the symptoms. Patient with motor deficit generally complain, complain of weakness, heaviness or stiffness, clumsiness, impaired muscular control, or difficulty in executing movements. The term weakness is sometimes used in a non-specific way to denote fatigue or loss of energy, drive or interest, and care must be taken to clarify that the patient mean loss of muscle power. While fatigue, it means much more often a sign of disease outside the central and peripheral nervous system. So, depression and other psychiatric and behavioral disorder, as well as medical illnesses associated with a complaint of weakness, are all, all frequent causes of fatigue. So, weakness can occur in certain group of muscles, like the involvement of muscles supplied by the cranial nerve may lead to diplopia, like in the oculomotor nerve, or trochlear, or abducens, cranial nerve. Difficulty of chewing, like the trigeminal nerve, sucking, blowing, or using the facial muscles, facial nerve, difficulty in swallowing, with the nasal regurge and dysarthria, this is related to the clozopharyngeal and vagus, and hypoglossa. Also, the weakness can affect proximal muscles of the body or distal muscle. For example, weakness of proximal muscle in the legs leads to difficulty in climbing stairs, 
or in getting up from squatting position. Whereas weakness in the arms lead to difficulty with tasks, such tasks like combing the hair or tying a shawl. Distal weakness in the arm may lead to clumsiness, difficulty with such fine motor tasks as doing up buttons or tying shoelaces. Temporal profile, several aspects of the present complaint must be documented. Temporal profile means mode of onset, course. Mean, you know what, what we mean by the mode of onset, like sudden onset, acute, subacute, chronic. The other things in the temporal profile, the other uh, things in the history is the associated symptoms, past medical history, developmental history, and family history. Examination of the motor system. A inspection. First of all, muscle bulk. We assess the bulk of the muscle and we look for any wasting or atrophy. This suggests that the weakness is due to lesion of the lower motor neuron. Pseudohypertrophy of muscles occur in certain forms of myopathy. Fasciculation. It is twitches of small groups of small of muscle fibers that related to one motor unit. It, it is a visible regular flickering over the surface of the affected muscle caused by spontaneous contractions of the individual motor units suggests that weakness is due to lower motor neuron. Namely, fasciculation are most common in anterior horn cell disorder, but also can occur in normal individuals. Other things in the inspection here, postural abnormalities, which result from overaction of certain muscles, which is exa exemplified by the typical hemiplegic posture when there is a flexion of the upper limbs, upper limb and extension of the ipsilateral lower limb. Involuntary movements like takes, tremor, chorea and ethetosis. Muscle tone is the resistance of the muscle to passive movement of a joint. There are two types of increased tone can be distinguished. A spasticity, which consists of increased in the tone that affects different muscle groups to different extent. Rigidity, is consists of increased resistance to the passive movement that is independent of the direction of the movement. The exam the form of spasticity can be called clasp knife spasticity and the example or the form of rigidity can be of two types lead pipe rigidity or cogwe rigidity hypotonia it is a flaccidity it is it is characterized by excessive floppiness or reduced resistance to the passive movement so that the distal portion of the limb is easily waved to and fro when the limb is extremely shaken. Hypotonia relate usually to the pathological involvement of the lower motor neuron. Clonus, it is a series, it is consist of a series of rhythmic reflex contractions of the muscle that is suddenly subjected to sustained stretch. Each beat caused by renewed stretch of the muscle during relaxation from its previous contracted state. Muscle power. For practical and comparative purposes, power, power is best graded. The upper motor neurons lesion, like stroke, lead to weakness that characteristically involves the extensors and abductors more than flexors and adductors of the arms and the flexors more than the extensors of the leg. This is called pyramidal distribution of weakness. While lower motor neurons produce weakness of muscles supplied by the affected neurons, the, particu the particular distribution of the weakness may point to the lower motor neuron involvement at the spinal cord, nerve root, plexus, peripheral nerve, 
level. The proximal distribution of thickness usually suggests nerve root, neuromuscular junction, and myopathic disorders, whereas predominantly distal involvement suggests an anterior cell, limb plexus, and peripheral nerve distribution. Reflexes Deep tender reflexes First, hyperflexia Second, hyperflexia Increased reflexes occur Of course, hyperflexia, we mean it is occur in, in uh, lower motor neuron Hyperflexia occur with the upper motor neuron lesion but they may also occur with symmetric distribution in certain healthy subjects and in patients under emotional stress. Reflex asymmetry. Although the intensity of reflex responses varies considerably among the subjects, reflexes should be symmetric in any individual. Several general points can be made regarding reflex asymmetries. A. Lateralized asymmetry of response. That's to say reflexes that are brisker on one side of the body than on the other usually indicate an upper motor neuron disturbance, but sometimes reflect a lower motor neuron lesion on the side with the depressed reflexes. B. Focal reflexes. Focal reflex deficits often relate to the root, plexus, or peripheral nerve lesion. For example, unilateral depression of the ankle jerk commonly reflects an S1 radiculopathy resulting from lumbosacral disc lesion or herniation. C. Loss of distal tender reflexes, especially ankle jerks, with the preservation of more proximal ones is common in polyneuropathies. Those mentioned above are deep tendon. Now, superficial reflexes, which can be classified as superficial touch reflex and superficial pain reflex. Superficial touch reflex uh, the polysynaptic superficial abdominal reflexes, which depends on the integrity of T8 to, to T12 spinal cord segments, are listed by gently stroking each quadrant of the abdominal wall with a blunt sub object such as wooden stick. We concentrate on this blunt object, don't to produce pain because it is a superficial touch reflex. A normal response consists of contraction of the muscle in the quadrant stimulated with a brief movement of the umbilicus toward the stimulus. Asymmetric loss of response may be a diagnostic of diagnostic significance. The cutaneous abdominal reflexes are frequently absent bilaterally in the elderly, in obese, in multiparous women, and in patients who have had abdominal surgery. Second type of superficial reflexes is, is the superficial pain reflex, which uh, Manifest, or which can be done by stimulation of the lateral border of the foot in normal adults, leads to the plantar flexion of the toes and dorsiflexion of the ankle. The Babinski response consists of dorsiflexion of the big toe and fanning of other toes, a response to the stroking the lateral border of the foot, which is part of S1 dermato. Flexion at the hip and knee may also occur. Such an extensor plantar response indicates an upper motor neuron lesion involving the contralateral motor cortex or the corticospinal tract. It can also be found bilaterally in certain situations like anesthetized patient, comatose subjects, post ictal state, and in normal infants. Now, the pattern of weakness or paralysis. Monoplegia denotes paralysis or severe weakness of the muscle in one limb and monoparesis denotes less severe weakness in the one limb. Hemiplegia or hemiparesis is a weakness in both limbs and sometimes the face on one side of the body. Paraplegia or paraparesis is weakness of both legs with normal upper limbs. And quadriplegia or quadriparesis also can called tetraplegia or tetraparesis is weakness of all four limbs. Clinical localization of the lesion. An upper motor neural lesion, the signs, weakness or paralysis, spasticity, increased tender reflexes, an extensor plantar, which is Babinski's signs, Babinski's sign or response, loss of superficial abdominal reflexes, little if any muscle atrophy. Localization, 
of the underlying lesion. A discrete lesion of the cerebral cortex or its projections may produce focal motor deficits involving, for example, the contralateral hand, or a lesion at the level of the internal capsule where, uh, where the descending fibers from the cerebral cortex are closely packed commonly result in a severe hemiparesis that involves the contralateral limbs and face. While a brainstem lesion characteristically leads to a cranial nerve disturbance on the ipsilateral side and a contralateral hemiparesis. The cranial nerves affected depend on the level at which the brainstem is involved. More diffuse lesion leads to bilateral motor deficit often with accompanying sensory and cranial nerve disturbance and disequilibrium. Finally, spinal cord lesion is more often bilateral, lower motor neuron deficit at the level of the lesion. So the spinal cord lesion is produced bilateral lower motor neuron deficit at the level of the lesion in the spinal cord and a corticospinal or sensory deficit below it with or without disturbance in the bladder, bowel or sexual function. Lower motor neuron lesion features or signs weakness or paralysis wasting and fasciculation of the involved muscle hypotonia flaccidity loss of tender reflexes when neurons subserving them are affected the localization of the underlying uh, lesion and distinguish weakness from a root plexus peripheral nerve neuromuscular junction or a primary muscle disorder the distribution of motor deficit is of particular importance Reflexes in a neuromuscular junction or a primary muscle disorders are usually preserved. Now, we talk about the cerebellar lesions and sensory disorders. In, cerebr in cerebellar lesions, the patient complains of difficulty in walking and or unsteadiness of the gait. Ataxia, it is a defective muscle con muscular control resulting in an in an irregular and clumsiness of movement that is not the result of muscle weakness. Ataxia can affect eye movements, speech, limbs, trunk, stance, means the standing posture, and gait. There are three types of ataxia, cerebellar ataxia, vestibular ataxia, and sensory ataxia. The cerebellar ataxia can be divided into two types. Trunkal ataxia due to disequilibrium and limb ataxia due to incoordination. Cerebellar ataxia is a syndromic diagnosis. The signs of cerebellar ataxia, there are specific and non-specific. The specific cerebellar signs are intention tremor, Dysynergia, dysdiadacokinesia, dysmetria, which, which means pass pointing, impairment of the check reflex or impaired rebound. The non specific cerebellar signs hypotonia, scanning and staccato dysarthria, the ocular movement, like nystagmus and gaze impairment, ataxic gait, broad base gait or drunken like gait with veering to one side and five pendular reflexes. The differences between midline and cerebellar hemisphere lesions, the midline cerebellar lesion characterized by broad base gait to compensate for tranquil ataxia, taban. vertical nystagmus, head and the trunk titubation. While cerebellar hemisphere lesion characterized by hypotonia, nystagmus, drunken like gait, dysarthria, which occur due to left paravermal lesion, and coordination, we mentioned above, dysmetria, dysynergia, dysdiadacokinesia, intention tremor, and impair rebound phenomena. The causes of cerebellar ataxia either sudden it, any sudden means vascular like cerebellar infarction or hemorrhage 
acute and subacute like what occur in metabolic like drugs carbamazepine vernica encephalopathy infection like cerebellitis and inflammatory and autoimmune disease chronic acquired deficit like drugs like phenytoin alcoholic cerebellar degeneration multiple sclerosis tumors paraneoplastic hypothyroidism glutinotaxia like in celiac disease or chronic ataxia due to hereditary causes like posterior fossa malformation Wilson disease ataxia telangiectasia hereditary spinocerebellar ataxia and the Friedrich like the for example Friedrich ataxia what about sensation the somatosensory system is a division of the nervous system that allows us to make accurate influences about the outside world by using a formation from the receptors that respond to stimuli. Sensation, sensation a chemical or physical change which stimulates the receptors endings of the sensory neurons which alters the flow of the impulses in the sensory pathways. The impulse then lead to an experience that we will call that we will call sensation. Symptoms and signs of sensory system disorders. The sensory disturbances may consist of loss of sensation, abnormal sensations, or pain. The positive phenomena usually result, result from trains of impulses generated at the site or sites of lower the threshold or heightened excitability along a sensory pathway, either peripheral or central, often experienced as paresthesia, which means tingling sensation, because excessive phenomena represent excessive activity in sensory pathway, they are not necessarily associated with sensory deficit, which means loss upon examination. While negative phenomena represent loss of sensory function and are characterized by diminished or absent feeling, often experienced as numbness. In contrast to the positive phenomena, the negative phenomena are accompanied by abnormal finding on sensory examination. Sensory symptoms may be either positive or negative, but sensory signs on examination are always a measure of negative phenomena. Sensory symptoms, numbness, is often used to describe loss of sensation. Paresthesia or dysesthesia are general forms, general terms used to denote tingling sensation, positive phenomena. Paresthesia or dysesthesia are abnormal sensations due to partially damaged sensory fibers, which become hyperexcitable and capable of generating ectopic impulses at their receptor sites or along their course, either spontaneously, paresthesia, or in response to a naturally stimulus evoked impulses, dysesthesia. Hyperalgesia refer to an increased sensitivity to pain, usually used with respect to cutaneous sensation. They imply an over response to supra threshold stimulus. While hyperpathia means an extreme over response to subthreshold tactile or thermal stimuli. Once the stimulus is perceived, it may, it may have a severely painful, such as tenderness and soreness. It is similar to hyperalgesia with the addition that the feeling of pain continues even after the stimulus that causes it has been removed. While allodynia it refers to misperception of trivial subthreshold tactile sensation as pain. It is a clinical feature of many painful conditions such as neuropathies, complex regional pain syndrome, post herpetic neuralgia, fibromyalgia, and migraine. What about the sensory examination? To find a significant and important sensory signs in the absence of appropriate symptoms is very rare. To elicit loss of sensation, always moving from impaired sensation to normal sensation, patterns of sensory loss, spinal nerve root, the spinal nerve root lesion will cause a dermatomal sensory loss corresponding to the cutaneous distribution of that spinal nerve root, the nerve lesion will lead to sensory deficit in the distribution of that nerve. Polyneuropathy are generally distal and symmetric in distribution of deficit.
The deficit is often described as stoking glove in type. If the spinal cord is transected, all sensation is lost below the level of the transaction. A brainstem lesion characteristically leads to crossed patterns of sensory disturbance in which one side of the face and opposite side of the body are affected. Hemisensory disturbance occurs from which which was described from head to the foot is often thalamic in origin. Signs of cortical sensory disturbances. The cortical sensation is mediated by the parietal lobes and represents an integration of the primary sensory modalities. Testing cortical sensation is only meaningful when the primary sensation is intact. Failure of touch localization is usually carried out by light pressure for an instant with examiner fingertips asking the patient whose eyes are closed to identify the site of touch with his or her fingertips. Allesthesia is a failure of localization of touch. Extinction is mislocalization of the touch stimulus on bilateral simultaneous stimulation. Two-point discrimination. The ability to distinguish simultaneous touch at two neighboring points depends upon the integrity of the central and peripheral nervous system. The degree of separation of the two points and the part of the body that is stimulated. The patient is required to indicate whether he or she is touched by one or two compass points while the distance between points is varied in order to determine the shortest distance at which they are recognized as different points. The, sh the, th the threshold for two point discrimination approximately four millim at the fingertips and maybe several centimeters on the back. A graphesthesia, it is a failure to recognize numbers or letters drawn by the examiner's fingertips on various parts of the body, most commonly tested on the palm of the hand. Stereognosis, it is the ability to identify. Stereognosis without A is ability to identify common objects placed in the hand. So, the normal person can recognize the shape, texture, and size of an object placed in his hand. So, a stereognosis is the inability to identify shape, size, text texture of an object. Patients should only be allowed to feel the objects with one hand at a time. Thank you.